Hi Tristan, what are the key features of the Lake Mason Clearbridge US Large Cap Growth Fund and how does it stand out from other funds in the market? Uh, I think there are a number of features to put forward for this fund. Uh, the first feature, uh, importantly, is that it's, uh, the fund has a focus on identifying unique franchises, dominant high quality growth companies. Uh, and this is something more subjective, it's more uh, art than science, it's, it's something that can't be approached by numbers alone. So it's something that can't be replicated entirely by, by passive. Uh, it's also uh, a strategy that's valuation sensitive. So on one hand, uh, the team looked for a very unique set of companies, these dominant franchises that I was mentioning, companies with great balance sheets uh, that really dominate their market, that have predictability on their revenues, experienced management teams. But at the same time, they're very attentive at which price they're buying into those companies. And that involves uh, that they often invest in those companies when there's uh, negative price momentum. So when, for uh, whatever reason, the, the price of that company is under pressure, whether it's because of the, uh, the economic cycle or because that company has experienced problems of its own. Uh, the third aspect relates to portfolio construction. And this is a fund that is high conviction it's quite a concentrated portfolio, yet at the same time is diversified. It's diversified by sector, and it's also diversified by the types of growth companies that it, that it owns. So what you'll see is that the core of the fund uh, is invested in uh, stable growers, blue chip type companies, uh, typically large to mega cap companies in uh, a whole host of sectors, um, like uh, companies like Microsoft, or Comcast or Unite Health, uh, which will represent 50 to 60 percent of the portfolio. And this is a part of the portfolio that doesn't change that much. Then the team will also own what they refer to as select growth companies. So those are the faster grower names, which are also typically trading at higher valuations. Uh, that's where you find uh, some of the biotech names or the internet companies. Because those companies can become at some times quite momentum oriented or more expensive, the exposure though will be capped at 35% to make sure that the portfolio, the, the performance of those stocks doesn't come to dominate the entirety of the portfolio. And the third group is made up of uh, what the team referred to as the cyclical category, which can be made of cyclical companies, but it's also made up of companies which, are, um, which you can think of as self-help stories companies which have really fallen on hard times, which can be of their own making, but where there's a recovery potential. So it's almost like a broken growth or value category. And the benefit of having uh, this exposure to three types of growth companies is that this exposure is uncorrelated. So typically these three categories will work well at different times uh, in the cycle. And I think this, this, um, this uh, triple pillar approach, if you will, is quite unique in the, uh, in the peer group. The result is that you have a fund that has generated solid returns, uh, and those returns have also come in, in an inefficient way. So the risk adjusted returns uh, of those funds, uh, of that fund has been, uh, has been very good. And it's a fund that boasts a good upside downside profile, meaning that it, it has made over time more money than it has lost in the downside. Where do you see opportunities in the U.S. market given the fact that valuation multiples are stretched, especially in the large cap segment? So it's true that valuations have expanded from what they were five, six years ago. Uh, it's also true that a lot of that re-rating has come from the mega cap tech space. So what you see is that the so-called FANG stocks have gone up a lot in recent years. Uh, some of that is due to uh, ETF flows. Uh, and the result is that in some cases, those, those stocks uh, look a little more um, generously valued than they did. Um, but if you look a little closer at the market, you'll find that there are actually sectors in stocks where valuations haven't made that much progress. Uh, even within technology, you find smaller names, which are a little more under the radar, uh, which are benefiting from the same uh, secular trends which are growing very nicely, but which aren't trading at the same valuations and which aren't as uh, crowded companies, so which are 
widely owned by the investor community. You have also have an area like large cap biotech, for example, uh, which has been underperforming for the last two years, uh, which went through a difficult stretch last year because of political uncertainty, but where that uh, political uncertainty has for the most part evaporated. Those stocks have already started to do better this year, but from a low base. Uh, and given where valuations are, uh, you're talking about companies which are trading at, actually at a discount to the broader market. Uh, Clearbridge and the team think that there's a true opportunity in here. Why is it an opportune time for investors to include the Lake Mason Clearbridge US large cap growth fund in their portfolio? I think uh, exactly for the, the reasons that, that I mentioned is that this is a fund that um, is diversified by sector, uh, by growth profile. And there's a wariness on the part of investors uh, when they look at the, the valuation multiple uh, on the market. There's also some uncertainty regarding uh, the economic outlook. Uh, will you see economic acceleration or on the contrary, will you see a slowing down of the US economy given uh, uh, how long in the tooth this cycle has been? In this context, uh, a portfolio uh, who's not predicated on uh, any single macro scenario playing out uh, could look quite interesting. And the Clearbridge US Large Cap Growth Fund can do well in the variety of economic scenarios because it has select exposures, but it does have exposure to uh, a large number of areas and a large type of, of growth companies, uh, which can do well, which will do well at different points in the cycle. Uh, so this one has, uh, has exposure to the mega cap tech companies, for example, uh, which have been doing so well in recent years, yet uh, it limits its exposure to those names. So if the a good performance of those stocks were to uh, stop and performance even go into reverse, uh, this fund will do okay uh, because it is not overexposed to those companies. And if you do have uh, a recovery in some very depressed parts of the market, like uh, more uh, value-oriented sectors of the market, it's also a fund that's likely to, to do well. So it's, it's a very efficient fund. Uh, I think that uh, that will give investors uh, who are maybe a little wary of equities right now a more predictable uh, set of returns over the course of the cycle. Thank you, Tristan.